Hello and welcome to Pabli. In this video, I'm going to talk about a form builder application and how you can integrate it with different other applications using Pabli Connect. I'm going to talk about Jot Form, which is an online form builder application with which you can create various forms for different needs. Now, here let's talk about the top 10 Jot Form automations where you can integrate Jot Form with Google Sheets, Microsoft Excel, or Teams, or different team chat applications, etc. So these are the most popular integrations that we have on our website. Let's check them. So send WhatsApp message on new form submission. You can add new Jot Form submissions to MS Excel. Send SMS alert on new top like new Jot Form submission. Then send business brochures to WhatsApp on new Jot Form submission. Or you can send Jot Form submission to Telegram. Similarly, you can integrate Jot Form with different applications. Now, how you can do that? For this, I'm going to take you to my screen where I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step guide on how you can do these integrations. And these are just a few examples. You have a lot more examples there on our websites. So, you have to go check that out. But right now, let's go to my screen to understand how you can integrate these applications. Hello, everyone. So, in this video, we will learn how to send WhatsApp notifications on every job form submission. So imagine this, a guy called as John has made a submission on JotForm and you want to send a thank you message to this guy on WhatsApp. Now the problem is there is no direct data flow between JotForm and WhatsApp. So in cases like these, we have to bring a third app to properly connect them both. So in this video, we will be using Pabli Connect to integrate JotForm and WhatsApp. So what Pabli Connect will do is, anytime a new submission is generated, it will automatically send a notification on WhatsApp. Now this little integration can be done in few easy steps. And the best part of using Pavli Connect is, there is no need for coding skills or programming knowledge. Let me show you on my screen. Okay, so to begin the process, first type pavli.com in your browser. pavli.com, press enter. Okay, so this is the website of pavli.com. Here hover on products. And here you will find the option called as connect. Click on connect. And then just click on sign in. Okay, so this is the dashboard of Public Connect. As you can see, I already have made an account in Public Connect. You can also create your own free account in just two minutes. Here, I would like to mention one more thing that Public Connect offers a plan where this integration can be tried out absolutely free. So you just have to clone the template of its workflow, which is available in the description box. Once you clone the template, you will get immediate access to this amazing workflow in your account. Okay, so scroll down and at the bottom you will find connect. Just click on access now. Okay, so at the top right corner you will find a button. Create workflow. Click this. A dialog box appears in front of you. It is asking you to give a name to this workflow. I am going to give it as Jot Form to WhatsApp. Jot Form to WhatsApp. And then just click on create. Okay, so when you click on create, a window appears in front of you. This is called as the trigger window. So in the choose app, how about we make it as jot form because we want to send the data from jot form. That is why. Okay, so now in the trigger event, how about we make it as new response. Okay, so new response is a trigger event. So your obvious question is what is a trigger event? Trigger is basically a if statement. It asks a question if the condition is met, what should be done? For example, if a new response is made, then what action should be taken by the system? At present, there is only one trigger event, that is new response. Now, in case if you want more triggers of your choice, you can make a request to our team at admin at the readpabli.com for the specific trigger that you want to build. But at present, I just want to send the data when a new response is made in JotForm. Okay, so basically the gist of the process is we are just trying to integrate JotForm to Pabli Connect. So basically the gist is we are just trying to integrate JotForm and Pabli Connect. So let me take you to JotForm. Okay, so this is my JotForm account and these are the forms I have. And one of these forms is kids registration form. So basically I want to receive the data from this particular form. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on edit form. Okay, so this is the form, kids registration form. Then I'm going to click on this button called as settings. Click on settings. Okay, so here you will find the option called as integrations. Click this. Okay, so here you have to select this one, webhooks. Click this. Okay, so as you can see, there is already a webhook set up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this webhook. Okay, so just uh, click on remove integration. Okay, so just again click on yes, remove. 
Okay, so this webhook has been removed. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm going back to webhooks once again. Okay, then I'm going to add one more webhook. So let me just remove this HTTP part. So basically here you have to fill in the webhook URL. Now, so to get the webhook URL, let me go to public connect and copy this. This is the webhook URL you want. Simply copy this and just paste it here. Okay, so we have added the webhook URL. Now just click on add new webhook. Okay, so basically at this point we have added a webhook URL. All we have to do is just click on complete integration. Okay, so as you can see the integration, it is showing the integration is ready. So basically we have uh, integrated this particular form that is kids registration form to Pabli Connect. So basically it means that whenever there is a response created in this particular form, Pabli Connect has to capture the data. So as to ensure that Pabli Connect captures this data, let me go to Pabli Connect and click on this button, capture webhook response, click this. Okay, so it is showing it is waiting for the data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going back to my form. Okay, and I'm just going to copy this link. Okay, and I'm just going to open this in a new tab. Okay. Okay, so imagine this a person is filling in the form. So these are the details of the form. Okay, so the age is uh, 13. Okay, so this is the email Aaron Manuel 1991 at the rate gmail.com. The name is Aaron, the last name is Manuel. And this is my contact info. Okay, so I have filled in my contact info. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on submit. Okay, so the form has been submitted. Now, uh, since Public Connect is integrated with this uh, particular form, let's check whether Public Connect has captured this data or not. So I'm going back to Public Connect. Yes, the data has been captured. So these are the details. So as you can see, the name is uh, Aaron Manuel. Okay, so these are the whole bunch of details we have. The Aaron Manuel, age 13, email is this, this is the contact info. Okay, and then we have, uh, this is the email once again, and this is the contact number. So basically, we have to send the confirmation message. We are planning to send the confirmation message on this particular uh, WhatsApp number, this particular mobile number. Now to send the confirmation message, all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on this plus button. Okay, so when you click on this plus button, another window opens up. This is called as the action window. So in the choose app, how about we make it as chat API because we will be using chat API to send the WhatsApp messages. Okay, so now in the action event, how about we make it as send message. Now send message is an action event. There are many more action events like create group, send file, send link, send location. All of them are bunch of action events. Now just like the triggers, if you don't find the action events according to your choice, you can make a request to our team at admin at the rate pabli.com to custom build an action event for you. But at present, I just want to send a message via chat API. Then click on connect with chat API. So in the new credentials, we have uh, two blanks to fill, the API URL as well as the token. Now to get the API URL, let me take you back to what, let me take you to a chat API. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this whole URL. So this is your API URL. I'm just going to copy this. Okay. And I'm just going to paste it here. Okay. So we have entered the API URL. Now coming to the part called as the token, I'm just copying this once again. Okay. Copying this and simply pasting it here. Okay, so we have entered the API URL, we have entered the token, just click on save. Okay, so when you click on save, a set of blanks has appeared in front of you. The purpose of uh, these blanks is very simple. We are going to construct a message from the data that we have received from uh, jot form and send it via WhatsApp. So before we start mapping in the details, let me tell you something. Public Connect doesn't take any chances with your data. Your data is 100% safe and secure with us. Okay, so before we start mapping in the data, uh, let me introduce you to this button. This is called as the mapping button. So when we click this, you will find all the data that we have received from our jot form. Now this is the phone number we want. All we are going to do here is I'm just uh, going to click here and the number gets mapped. So how about we just map this number? Okay, uh, there are actually two, three options we have. Yeah, this is the number we want. This is the phone number. Okay, so now coming to the part called as the message. So I'm just uh, typing in thank you. Thank you, Mr. Miss. And then I'm just uh, going to scroll down and enter the email or the name. Thank you, Mr. Aaron. And then I'm just going to enter a blank and just going to map in the name. So this is the name Manuel, I think it was Manuel. Okay, yeah, this is the last name Manuel. Thank you, Mr. Aaron Manuel. Okay, for filling out 
the form okay so it's all upper casing we have to change it for filling out the form so this is your age it's actually pretty redundant we don't want to do this but uh, okay let's enter the age okay and this is your email id okay and this is your email id so where is our email id yeah okay so this is the message uh, thank you mr aaron manuel for filling out the form so this is your age age 13 and this is your email id okay and this is the phone number so basically it will send all this data to this phone number so let me do that let me just uh, click on save and send test request to uh, send the whatsapp message so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to click on save and send test request so let us check what will happen okay so the api response is showing that the message has been sent to whatsapp okay so let me show you the message that uh, this guy called as aaron manuel has received okay so as you can see this is the message thank you mr miss aaron manuel for filling out the form and uh, so this is your age 13 and this is your email id aaron manuel 1991 at the rate gmail.com excellent so the presence of this message in whatsapp shows that we have successfully integrated jot form and whatsapp with help of public connect so about we double check if our integration is working fine or not but uh, before we do that let me explain you the whole mechanism in a nutshell so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to minimize this action window okay and i'm going to minimize this trigger window okay so basically this is the whole process in a nutshell first you integrated jot form to public connect and then you have integrated public connect to chat api so now there is a perfect flow of data between jot form and chat api so that is why we are getting messages on whatsapp so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going back to my jot form i'm copying this uh, url okay so this is the link of this uh, form okay and i'm going to fill in some details so this time we are going to fill in as uh, tom cruise the age is uh, 16 okay and this is the contact info okay so i have entered the contact just click on submit okay so a submission has been made so let's have a look into this guy's uh, whatsapp message i mean tom cruise whatsapp message uh, did he really receive the message okay so yeah so this is the message okay so the presence of this message shows that our integration is working absolutely fine this means anytime a new form submission is made in jot form it will be reflected as a message via whatsapp in this video, we are going to learn how you can add new jot form submissions to Excel spreadsheet row. So the idea here is that you have created a form using your jot form account. Now you want that whenever the form is submitted, automatically the details of the form submission should be added to your Excel spreadsheet as a new row. For that, you need to integrate your jot form account with Microsoft Excel. So here your trigger application would be jot form and your action application would be MS Excel. So how you can set up this automation and how you can integrate both these software applications using Pabli Connect, for that you need to come to my screen. So welcome to my screen. Here let us type P-A-B-B-L-Y, Pabli.com in our browser. This is a website of Pabli. Here we have to come to products and click on Pabli Connect. This is the landing page of Pabli Connect. As you are the first time user, you have to click on sign up for free button and you can create your own account in just 2 minutes and you are going to get free task every month. If you are already a user of Pabli Connect, simply click on sign in. In the all apps section, come to Pabli Connect and click on access now. This is the dashboard of Pabli Connect. Here we have to create a workflow. For that, come to this plus sign and click on create workflow. Now here we have to give a name to the workflow. So let us give the name as jot form to MS Excel integration. Here you can give the workflow name as per your requirement and simply click on create. Now we can see a trigger window and an action window. So Pabli Connect works on the concept of trigger and action. Trigger means when this happens, action means do this. So in this particular use case, we want that whenever we receive any form submission on our jot form form, we want the same data to be added to our MS Excel spreadsheet. For that, first we need to integrate our jot form specific form with Pabli Connect. So simply open this trigger window and here choose the application name as jot form. Select the trigger event as new response. Now we can see a webhook URL and some instructions. So by following these instructions, you can set up the webhook in your JotForm account. 
So I'm just going to copy this webhook URL from here and I'll take you to my JotForm account where I have already created some forms. That is stock market webinar, job application form, registration form, customer form. So now I want to integrate stock market webinar form with Pabli Connect so that whenever I receive a submission over here, uh, whenever the form is submitted, the details are captured in Pabli Connect. And here you can see I have zero submissions on this particular form. So I'm just going to click on edit form. And here I have taken the basic fields that is the name, first name, last name, email address and the phone number of the participant. Okay, if you want to add some more fields to this particular form, simply click on this plus sign add form element. Okay, and you can just uh, fill in the details or uh, you can add the elements or the fields as per your requirement. Once you are done completing this form, come to the settings option. Here on the left hand side, we can find integrations option. Click on it. And here in the search bar, we have to find webhooks. Select webhooks. And here we have to add a webhook. So here we will be pasting the webhook URL that we have copied from Pabli Connect. Okay, and then click on complete integration. Integration is ready. Now let's click on finish. So here we can see that there is a tick mark on this webhooks option. Let's move back to Pabli Connect. And here we can see that it is waiting for the webhook response. So in order to capture the response, we have to do a test submission. It means we have to fill up the form on the name of a customer. Okay. Or, the, or on the name of a participant. So let's move to the form once again. And here now I'll be clicking on publish option. And here we can find the form link. So I'm just going to open this form in a new tab. Here, let us give the first name of this participant as demo, last name as name itself, email address as demo at the rate pablitudes.com. And let's enter the phone number. And now let's click on submit. Thank you. Your submission has been received. So the form has been filled. Now let's move back to public connect. And here we can see the responses received and all the details related to the form and the form submission are captured over here. We can form, uh, find the form title as stock market webinar. And when we scroll down here, we can find the first name of the participant, last name, his email address and the phone number. So now we want this data to be added to our Excel spreadsheet. For that, we have to integrate our Excel spreadsheet with Public Connect also. So I'll just take you to the Excel spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet named webinar registrants, which I have already created. And the sheet name is stock market, where I am taking the details, first name, last name, email address, as well as the phone number of the participant who is going to attend the webinar. Okay. So now we are going to integrate this particular Excel sheet with Pabli Connect. So scroll down, come to this action step and here choose the application name as Microsoft Excel. Select the action event as add row to the worksheet. Click on connect. Click on add new connection and click on connect with Microsoft Excel. Now it is asking let this app access your info. Let's scroll down and click on yes to give away the access over here. Authorization successful. And now the Microsoft Excel account is connected to Public Connect. So as we have created a connection, here we can find all the spreadsheets or the workbooks that I have created in my Microsoft Excel account. Okay, you can find all the spreadsheet or the uh, workbooks names over here. So our workbook name was Webinar Registrant. So I'll be selecting the same uh, workbook name over here as Webinar Registrants. Now here we have to select the worksheet. So as I have created a single worksheet in this particular workbook, the worksheet name is automatically captured as stock market. If you have created multiple worksheets, then you have to select the worksheet name from the drop down. Okay. Now here it is asking for the first name, last name, email address and the phone number that needs to be entered in these fields. So we have already got all these details from the trigger response over here. So we will be mapping this data now. For mapping, scroll down, just click it over here, come to jot form response and from here we will be mapping the first name which was demo. In the same way let us map the last name also, that was name itself. Now we will be mapping the email address. And here let us map the phone number. So we have mapped all the details. Now let's click on save and send test request. Okay, and here we can see the response is received. It means the data is added to our Excel spreadsheet. Let's check it. We have to just refresh. Okay, and before refreshing itself, we can find first name as demo, last name as name itself, 
Here we can find the email address as well as the phone number. So in this way, we can see that we have set up the automation and our integration is working fine. Let's move back to Public Connect and let us save this workflow first. Data saved successfully. Okay. Now, as this is a one-time process, we have set up the automation. Next time, whenever any of your participant is going to fill up your JOT form, specific form, automatically the details of the form submission will be captured in your Excel spreadsheet over here. So, let's check this in the real time that whether our integration is actually working fine or not. For that, I'll just move to the form once again. And here, we are going to just enter the details of some other participant. Let's give the first name as dummy. Last name as customer, email address as dummy at the rate pablitudes.com. And let's enter the phone number over here. And let's click on submit. Thank you. Your submission has been received. So the form has been filled. Now let us check our Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And here we can find the details of the next participant name as dummy. Last name as customer, here we can find the email address and the phone number. So in this way, we can see that our integration is perfectly working fine. Let's move back to Public Connect. And I'll just minimize all these windows and let us see in a nutshell whatever we have done till now. So first, we have created an integration between JotForm and Public Connect so that whenever the response is received on the form submission, automatically the details are captured in Public Connect. And then using those details, we have entered the same data or the same record into Excel spreadsheet. And in this way, we have learned that how we can integrate JotForm with MS Excel using Public Connect. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So in this video, we will learn how to automatically send JotForm submissions to your MySQL database. So we are going to begin with a small example. So this is a form that I have created in JotForm. So as you can see, the title of the form is Refund Status. And a guy called as, let's say, Lygium is filling the form. So the first name is Lygium. This is the last name, O'Reilly. And uh, this is the email and this is his address where he lives and this is of course his phone number and the status is due. Let me just click on submit. So a form has been submitted by a person called as Lai Jim O'Reilly. Now the idea is that his detail will be entered as a database or created as a database in MySQL. So let me just uh, straight away take you to MySQL. So this is my MySQL and let me just uh, refresh this. Okay, so let's have a look. Yes. We do have the details, we have the name, the email, the status, as well as the mobile number. So your obvious question is, how did I do it? How did I manage to send the data from JotForm to MySQL? So basically, here I've used an integration and automation software called as Public Connect that integrates JotForm and MySQL. Now the best part of using Public Connect is there is actually no need for coding skills or programming knowledge. It can be done easily. Let me just show you the process. So basically, in the new tab, just type pabli.com. P A B L Y dot com, Pabli dot com, press enter. Okay, so this is the website of uh, Pabli dot com, hover on products, and here you will find the option connect. Click on connect. Okay, so this is the landing page of uh, Pabli Connect. Just click on sign in. Okay, so this is the dashboard of uh, Pabli Connect. As you can see, I already have made an account in Pabli Connect. You can also create your own free account in just two minutes. Let me just scroll down and here you will find connect. Just click on access now. Okay, so now basically we are going to create a new workflow to integrate JotForm and MySQL. So let me just click on this button, create workflow. Okay, so we have to give a name to this workflow. I'm going to give it as JotForm to MySQL. JotForm to MySQL. And let me just click on create. Okay, so when you click on create, you will find two windows, the trigger window as well as the action window. So basically, we are just going to create a new workflow. Now, in case if you want, I will add the link of this workflow in the description box so that you can clone it and directly access it into your account. Okay, so in the trigger window, we are going to choose the app as JotForm because we want to send the data from JotForm. That is why JotForm it is. Now in the trigger event, how about we make it as new response? Okay, so new response is a trigger event. So your obvious question is what is a trigger event? Trigger is basically a if statement. It asks a question if this condition is met, what should be done? For example, if a new response is made or generated in short form, then what action should be taken by the system? Now at present, we only have one trigger event that is new response. Now in case if you want more trigger events, all you have to do is approach the help section. 
So when you click on the help section, you will be straight away led to Pabli forums. And here you can make a request that you want so and so trigger events. Let me just close that. Okay. So basically the gist is we are just trying to integrate and receive data from JotForm into Pabli Connect. So let me just straight away take you to JotForm. So this is all the forms that is present in my JotForm account. These are all the forms that I have built. Now out of all these forms, I'm interested in this particular form, refund status. So let me just uh, click on edit form. We are going to integrate this particular form to my SQL. So click on edit form. Okay, so first of all, go to this part called as settings. Click this. And basically, since we want to integrate this particular form to public Connect, go to this part, integrations. Click this. Okay, now basically in the search, all you have to do is search for webhooks. Okay, this one. Click this. Now we have to add a webhook URL. First of all, remove this HTTP part. Okay, go to public Connect and simply copy this. This is the webhook URL you want. Copy this and simply paste it here. Okay, so we have added the webhook URL. Let me just click on complete integration. Okay, so it is trying to integrate. Yes, let me just click on finish. So let me just go to publish. Okay. So basically the gist is we have integrated this particular form to public connect. This means anytime any data is uh, created or a response is created in this particular form, public connect has to capture the data. So let's explore. Let's explore. Can public connect capture the data? Yes, it is showing it is waiting for the data. So let's conduct some experiment. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this link. Okay, so this is the link of the form and open this in a new tab and paste it here. Okay, so we are going to enter a different set of data. Okay, so let's say a person called as Rena Manuel is entering the form. So this is the name, Rena Manuel. This is the email. This is her address. And of course, this is her phone number. So let me just click on due and let me just click on submit. Okay, so the submission has been made by a person called as Rena Manuel. Now, since Jot form is integrated with Public Connect, let's explore where has Public Connect captured this data or not. So yeah, the data has been captured. So we have the data. So this is uh, the name. Okay, let me just scroll down. I'm sorry. Okay, so we have the name, the last name, we have the email, we have the address and we have the phone number. So also we have the status as due. So basically she hasn't paid the fees, the status is kept as due. Now we have to sync all this data into MySQL to create a database. So that is why in this window, that is the action window, we are going to mention the app as MySQL. MySQL, okay. Now in the action event, how about we make it as insert row. And let me just click on connect. Now in the new connection name, you have to enter the database username, database password, host, database, as well as port. Now for security concern, I'm not going to show you all these details. So I'm just going to blur it. So let me just enter all the details one by one. So I'm just going to enter the database username. Then I'm going to enter the database password. Okay. Then let me just enter the host. Okay. And let me just enter the database and let me just enter the port. Okay, so when you click on save, you will find a set of blanks. We have the table name, the ID, the name, email, the status and the mobile number. So basically, this is because we have selected a particular table called a status. Let me show you. So basically, these are all the tables I have. We have status, table 1, table 2 and user detail. Now for not any particular reason, I'm just particularly selecting this particular table that is status. Okay, so the plan is we are going to enter all the details in this particular table. Okay, so what about the ID? We don't have to enter any kind of ID, just uh, leave this field. Now let's start mapping. So we have to enter the name. Now remember this, the name field can be found out from here. Okay, so this is the data of the name. So we're just going to map this. Okay, so let me just uh, click on this button. And here you will find from the first accordion the name. So this is the name. Okay, Reina, and we have mapped it easy. Then we have to map the email again. This is something that we got from here. This is the email. Okay, so we got from short form, we click here, click on the jot forms accordion and this is the email and we have mapped it the status as far as i know it was uh, due or something yes we have mapped it and then let me just map the phone number okay so let me just map the phone number so we have entered all the details sufficient enough to create a database in mysql so all you have to do is just click on save and send test request okay so it is showing the status as success the data has been inserted so let's have a look. Let me just uh, refresh my SQL page. Okay, so yeah, we do have the data. Okay, so we have the name, email, as well as the status, and of course the mobile number. Excellent. So the presence of this data confirms that we have successfully integrated JotForm and MySQL with help of Public Connect. Now, before you leave, let me just explain you the whole mechanism in a nutshell. So let me just uh, minimize uh, this action window. 
and let me just minimize the trigger window. So basically, this is the whole process in a nutshell. First, you integrated JOT form to Pabli Connect, and then you have integrated Pabli Connect to MySQL. So now there's a perfect flow of data between JOT form and MySQL. Excellent. Hello, everyone. So in this video, we will learn how to send SMS notifications on every JOT form submission. So imagine this, a guy called as John has made a submission and uh, you want to send an SMS thanking John. Now here you have two choices. You can actually manually copy all the data from JOT form into SMS sending apps like Twilio to send an SMS or you can bring in some automation. So in this video, we will be using Pabli Connect to integrate JOT form and Twilio. So what Pabli Connect will do is Anytime a new submission is created in JOT form, it will automatically send an SMS alert via Twilio. Now this little integration can be done in few easy steps. And the best part of using Pabli Connect is, there is no need for coding skills or programming knowledge. So let me show you on my screen. Okay, so to begin the process, first type pabli.com in your browser. pabli.com, press enter. Okay, so this is the website of pabli.com. So here hover on products and now you will find the option called as connect. Click on connect and then just click on sign in. Okay, so this is the dashboard of Pabli Connect. As you can see, I already have made an account in Pabli Connect. You can also build your own free account in just two minutes. Here, I would like to mention one more thing that Pabli Connect offers a plan where this integration can be tried out absolutely free. So you just have to clone the template of its workflow, which is available in the description box. Once you clone the template, you will get immediate access to this amazing workflow in your account. Okay, so scroll down and at the bottom you will find connect. Just click on access now. Okay, so at the top right corner, you will find a button, create workflow. Click this, a dialog box appears in front of you. It is asking you to give a name to this workflow. I'm going to give it as jot form to Twilio. Jot form to Twilio. And then just click on create. Okay, so when you click on create, a window appears in front of you. This is called as the trigger window. So in the choose app, how about we make it as jot form because we want to send the data from jot form. That is why. Okay, so now in the trigger event, how about we make it as new response. Okay, so new response is a trigger event. So your obvious question is, what is a trigger event? Trigger is basically a if statement. It asks a question, if the condition is met, what should be done? For example, if a new response is created in jot form, then what action should be taken by the system? At present, there is only one trigger event, that is new response. Now, in case if you want more triggers of your choice, you can make a request to our team at admin at the rate pabli.com for the specific trigger that you want to build. But at present, I just want to send the data when a new response is made in jot form. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we are just trying to integrate jot form to pabli connect. So let's have a visit to jot form. So this is my jot form account. And as you can see, these are the forms I have. And one of these form is called as kids registration form. So I am planning to integrate this particular form to Pabli Connect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on edit form. Okay, so this is the edit page. Here click on the option called as settings. Click this. Okay, now you will find the option called as integrations. Click this. Okay, so out of all these options, you have to look for this option called as webhooks. Click this. Okay, so as you can see, there is already an integration up and running. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove this integration. Okay, so just click on yes, remove. Okay, and I'm going back to uh, webhook once again. Okay, and what I'm going to do here is we have to add a webhook URL. Now to get the webhook URL, let me go to public connect and copy this. This is the webhook URL you want. Simply copy this and just paste it here. Okay, so we have added the webhook URL. All we have to do is just click on complete integration. Okay, so this means that we have integrated this particular form to Public Connect. This means anytime a response is created in this particular form, Public Connect has to capture the data. So as to ensure that Public Connect captures this data, let me go to Public Connect and click on this button, capture webhook response, click this. Okay, so it is showing it is waiting for the data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going back to my form, okay, clicking on publish. Okay, so as you can see, this is the URL. I'm just going to copy this link and open this in a new tab. Okay, so as you can see, this is the form. So I'm going to fill in the details. So these are the details. Okay, so the age of the guy is uh, 15. And then this is the contact. Okay, so this is the number. And just click on submit. 
Okay, so the form has been submitted. Okay, so let's have a look in uh, Public Connect. Has it captured the data since it is uh, integrated with uh, this particular form? Okay, so as you can see, the data has been captured. So the username is uh, Ashi. So basically, this is because this is an account of this guy called as Ashi. Okay, so that is being shown. And then we have the first name. So this is the respondent's name, first name, respondent's last name. This is the age of the respondent. And this is the email of the respondent, Aaron Manuel 1991 at the rate gmail.com. And of course, this is the contact number. So basically, we have to send SMS to this contact number. So to send the SMS, we are going to use Twilio. Now to establish Twilio with uh, chart form, all you have to do is just click on this plus button. When you click on this plus button, another window opens up. This is called as the action window. So in the choose app, how about we make it as Twilio. Twilio. Okay, so now in the action event, how about we make it as send SMS message. Now send SMS message is an action event. There is one more action event like call phone. Now, just like the triggers, if you don't find the action events according to your choice, you can make a request to our team at admin at the rate pabli.com to custom build an action event for you. But at present, I just want to send an SMS message. Okay, so just click on connect with Twilio. In the new credentials, we have to fill in the account SID, authorization token, and again, the account SID. Now, to get these details, let's have a visit to Twilio. Okay, so this is my Twilio account. So I'm just going to go to this part called as the top right corner. I'm going to click on top right corner. So here you will find the option called as uh, settings. Click this. Okay, so this is my settings page. Okay, so it is again asking me to authorize. So I'm just going to fill in my password. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, these are the live credentials. So this is my account SID. All I'm going to do here is uh, copy this. Okay and simply paste it here. Okay, so we have entered the account SID. Now, we have also have to paste the account SID once again here. So I'm just copying this and pasting it here. I have already copied this, so I'm just pasting it here. Now comes the part called the authorization token. So to get the authorization token, let's go back to Twilio and remove this privacy. So this is your authorization token. Copy all of this and simply paste it here. Okay, so we have entered the authorization token and also we have entered the account SID two times. Okay, so our details has been entered. Just click on save. Okay, so when you click on save, a set of blanks has appeared in front of you. The purpose of uh, these blanks is very simple. We are going to construct a message from the data that we have received from JotForm and send it, send an SMS via Twilio. Now in the body of the SMS, we can type something like, uh, hey, hey, Mr. Slash Miss and then we can just map in the name. So let me introduce you to this button. This is called as the mapping button. So all the data that we have received from JotForm will be available here. So as you can see, this is the first name. Hey, Mr. Aaron. And then we enter a gap and uh, this is the last name. Okay. Hey, Mr. Miss Aaron. Thanks for filling out this form. Feel free to connect us, connect with us. Uh, so that's not necessary, filling out this form. Your age is, uh, okay, so what was the age, 13 or 14? 12, nope, it was 15, I guess. Okay, yeah, the age was 15. And uh, your age is 15. And your email, okay, so what was the email? So this is my email. This is the respondent's email. Okay, so we have mapped it. Excellent. So sender's numbers, that's uh, basically my number. So I'm just going to enter my uh, enter the sender number. Okay, so I have entered my sender number. And this is the recipient number. So basically, we are going to send uh, the SMS to this guy. So we are going to just map in the phone number. So the phone number is this one. Okay, so we have mapped all the details. All we have to do at this point is just click on save and send test request to send the SMS. So let me just uh, click on save and send test request. Okay, so this is the API response. It is showing the data has been sent. Okay, so let me show you the message. Okay, so this is the message. Hi, Mr. Mr. Aaron uh, Manuel. Thanks for filling out this form. Your age is 15 and your email is this. Excellent. So the presence of uh, this SMS shows that we have successfully integrated JotForm and Twilio with help of Public Connect. So how about we double check if our integration is working fine or not. But uh, before we do that, let me explain you the whole mechanism in a nutshell. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to minimize this action window. 
and I'm going to minimize this trigger window. Okay, so basically this is the whole process in a nutshell. First you integrated JotForm to Public Connect and then you have integrated Public Connect to Twilio. So now there is a perfect flow of data between JotForm and Twilio. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going back to my JotForm. Okay, I'm just copying this link and opening this in a new tab. And I'm going to refill this form with different detail. So this time it is going to be filled by this guy called as Tom Cruise. So the age of Tom Cruise is he's just 14 years. And this is his phone number. Okay, so this is his phone number. So let me just click on submit. Okay. So let's have a look whether uh, Tom Cruise has received a SMS. Okay, so this is the SMS. And uh, the presence of this SMS shows that our integration is working absolutely fine. This means anytime a new response is made in JOT form, it will be reflected as a SMS via Twilio. Hey everyone, welcome back again. And in this video, you are going to see an automation which will let you send WhatsApp messages on form submission. So guys, here we are using Jot form to create a form for our customers or uh, leads or prospects. And here, as and when any of your interested customer is going to fill the form, we want to send to him or her a brochure of your business on WhatsApp. So we are going to automate this process and let me show you how it is going to look like. So this will be the flow of this automation guys here as and when any of your customer is going to fill this form or a lead is going to fill this form. The brochure of your business is going to be delivered to the WhatsApp account of the same person automatically. So you need not to manually sort out the details of your lead and manually compile messages for each and every one. So this is going to save a lot of your time and energy and you can focus on more productive things of your business. And to make this happen, we are using Pabli Connect, which is an integration and automation tool. And the best part is anyone can set up this automation very easily without any coding skills or programming knowledge. So guys, let me show you how you can also set up this automation right now. So guys, to set up this automation, first of all, you need to reach the dashboard of Pabli Connect. And to reach here, you have to use this link, pabli.com slash connect. And we have pasted the same link in the description as well. From here, you can sign up for free by clicking on this button and you can set up your free Pabli Connect account in just two minutes. And you'll get 100 free automation tasks for every new month. So sign up right now and log in to reach here on the dashboard. And here guys, you have to create a workflow of automation. So just click here on this create workflow button like this. And here you can give a suitable or relevant name to this workflow. So I'm giving the name here as short form to short form to what's app. Okay, let me enter it properly. short form to WhatsApp automation. So you can put the name like this. And after that, you have to click on this screen. Let me put it in caps. Okay. Now you can click on this create button and you can see your workflow page is loading up here. And on this page, you will find the trigger and the action. So guys, automations work on the trigger and action. So trigger is the event which is going to trigger or start this workflow so it is saying when this happens so the action would be the response towards this trigger so it is saying here do this all right so action will make public connect perform any action according to the trigger so first of all you need to set up this trigger here so from this choose app field you have to choose your trigger application first which is jot form in our case so search for jot form and select it and the trigger event would be new response and it will give you this URL. This is called as a webhook URL. And with the help of this, we are going to make a connection with Jot form. And after that, we are going to capture the response uh, from our form submission with the help of this webhook connection. And that will act as the test data. Let me show you. So to make a connection here, first of all, you need to reach the dashboard of Jot form application. So this is my Jot form applications dashboard. And here I have created these forms. And the form we are using here is this one. This is the form. Let me show you again. From here, you can see this is the contact form I have created, which I'm going to use to collect the leads. Okay. And by filling this form, the customer will receive the brochure on WhatsApp. Okay. So here guys, you have to click on this more option and here you will find the settings option. So click on form settings. 
and under the form settings page guys you will see this integrations option on the left hand side click on integrations and here you have to use this webhooks tab click on webhooks okay so you can see already an integration is up and running here so let me remove this integration all right search for webhook again and here you will find uh, the add webhook field okay so in this add webhook field guys you have to paste this webhook url that you got so just copy this from here all right go back to your jot form application settings and paste this webhook url here then click on complete integration all right you can see now the integration is ready so click on finish all right so we are done making a connection here and you can see in your workflow as i have copied this webhook url it started showing this waiting for the webhooks response so this means now we have to perform a test submission so the test submission would be as uh, the same as the trigger event uh, that means we have to capture a new response from our form submission so we are going to fill the form and capture the response here and that will act as a test data for us let me show you this is our form let me fill the details of any demo person so let's say the name of a lead is neil patrick the email address of this person is this and here i need to enter the whatsapp number of this person okay like this and i am submitting this form all right so you can see uh, the form is submitted here let's check in our workflow if we got the data of the submission and here you can see we have received the form submissions data as this uh, you can see the forms title the things the uh, that we have entered as the test data all we got here okay now what we want we want to send this lead a brochure on whatsapp for that to happen you 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 need to use this action step and from this choose app field choose whatsapp's cloud api okay so uh, if you want to set up your own business cloud api in whatsapp you can see the links that we have pasted in the description where we have thoroughly explained how you can set up your own whatsapp business api all right after that you have to select this here in the action step and after that select the action event as send template message then click on connect and from here select add new connection okay and from here you can see it is asking for the token the permanent access token of your whatsapp cloud api the phone number id and the business account id so you will uh, find these things when you are done setting up your cloud api and if you want to know how to find these things you just have to click here on this here text and on this page you will reach the forum page of pabli forum.pabli.com and here also we have embedded these two videos on how to set up your cloud api and how to generate the permanent access token for your whatsapp cloud api and here uh, we have uh, clear clear instructions written here step by step with screenshots as well to make to show you how you can make connections of your cloud api in pabli connect okay so you can follow those instructions right let me show you how where you can find these things so guys uh, you need to reach the developer.facebook.com page and in the developer section of meta where you have created an app you can see i have created an app and with this app i have connected my whatsapp cloud api in this app section when you click on this whatsapp getting started page you will reach this page all right getting started page of whatsapp and first you get a temporary access token and temporary access tokens expires in 24 hours so you need to generate a permanent token as well so you can see how you can do that and here in the second step you can see send and receive messages uh, we have this phone number id here so just copy this id and paste it here like this then go back and uh, you will see this whatsapp business account id also just copy that and paste it here right so uh, similarly you need to paste the token also so guys generating a permanent access token for uh, whatsapp cloud api is a one-time task once you get your permanent access token you need to save that token because we are going to make the connection again with with the same token and guys making the connection with pabli connect by this process by selecting add new connection 
and filling these three things and clicking on save is also a one time task. Once you made a connection by filling these things, next time what you can do, you can use existing connection. As I have already made a connection in a different workflow before by this process, now I can choose existing connection and from this connections list, you can choose your connection, existing connection and then click on save and you will be connected again with WhatsApp cloud API like this. All right. And here it is asking the templates name. So guys to send messages on WhatsApp directly, you need to create message templates inside your uh, developer section or, or inside your cloud API setup. Let me show you here. Uh, you can see in the second step, send messages with the API. It is saying to create your own message template, click here. And when you click here on the hair text, you will reach this message templates page. And here you can create all these ma uh, message templates like these I have created. So guys, let me show you one. Message templates are nothing but the predefined message structures which you can use to send WhatsApp messages to multiple people at a time. So here you can see I have this template uh, named as business underscore flyer and this is the main body of this message and this is the preview of this message. So this is how this message will look like when you use this template. Okay, this is how a message will look like on WhatsApp. So to create such message templates here, what you can do, you just have to click here on this create message template button. And here you can select the category in which you want to create a message template. So here we have shipping update, payment update and many categories like that. So I'm selecting one like this account update. Okay. Now you can give a name to your template and you can select the language in which you want to send a message. All right. And after that, click on continue. And here on this page, you can add a header to your message. And in that header, you can enter a text or you can enter media and in media, you can add an image, a video or a document. Okay. And here in the main body, you need to enter the main message that you want to send. So let's say I'm uh, typing a message as hello. And after hello, I want to say hello, this, this, the hello and the name of the person. Okay. So guys, if you want to place here the name of the person to whom you are sending this message, you need to add a variable tag here because in automated messages, we are using the same template to send messages to multiple people. So uh, with the uh, with every new message for every new person, the name is going to change. Okay, so for that to happen, you need to add a variable here by clicking on add variable. And this is how you can add a variable tag or a body field inside your message template. And now you can get this body fields changed with every new message. Okay. I'll show you how you can change the body fields. So you have to put these body fields or variable tags in strategic places inside your message template. After that, you can add a footer. Also, you can add a call to action button also in, inside the message template. And you can check the previews also of your message here only. Right. So after completing your template, you have to submit it. Okay. Right now I'm canceling this. And after getting your message template submitted, Facebook will review your template in just few minutes and approve it. All right. So after get your templates approved, you can use them. So the template I am using here is this one. Let me show you. I am using this send brochure image template. Okay. This one send underscore brochure underscore IMG. This is the template I am using. Okay. And this is the preview of this template. Let me show you. This is the preview. Okay. And here you can see in the message body, I have this one variable tag and two and three tags here. So three variable tags means we can change three things in this message in every new message. Okay. So right now you have to select this message template inside your workflow. So in your workflow, you have this template name field. And when you click here, it will show you all the templates that you have in your dev API setup. So from here, I'm going to select this send brochure IMG template. Okay. And you can see the language code and the template ID filled up here automatically. Now it is asking for the recipient's mobile number or WhatsApp number. So we are going to use this test data here from this first step where we have captured the test data and we have received this WhatsApp number label here. 
so I'm going to map this label here and to map it just click here on this field and it will show you this jot form step in the drop down and from here only you can map the whatsapp number label okay so when you map this data uh, th these numbers are going to change with every new form submission that you receive okay and a new message will be delivered to the new number that's why it is important to map the data okay so here it is asking for the header image url so uh, you can see in my message template I have this header added here in which we can add an image or the brochure of our business so guys I have uh, created a brochure and I have uploaded it in my Word WordPress website so from there I am going to copy the link of the uh, header image URL and that link should be uh, should end in this dot png or dot jpg okay so the link of the image should end with the extension file type okay so you can use .png and .jpg links here so let me copy my link and paste it here so guys I have pasted the uh, png link of a travel business okay Tra tools and travels business the brochure of tools and travels okay I have taken this example and now it is asking for the body fields so as I have already shown you that I have three body fields here three variables in my message one is for the name other is for our website and third is for the business's name okay so let me enter these details here let, I'm going to map the name from the first tab because we are capturing the names of the persons from the form submission so I'm mapping the full name here Neil Patrick okay here you can enter your website address or your business profile so that is not going to change I think so I'm putting it manually so the things that you put manually here are not going to change with the message the things that you map here are going to change okay because when you map data the labels are going to change with every new trigger or form submission okay here you can put any name let's say the name of my business is Pabli only so you can put it here like this okay right so we are done filling the details here map the data here now I can show you how the message will appear because I have the access of this whatsapp account and this is the whatsapp account guys actually and I can show you how the message will look like so I'm clicking here on save and send test request and let's see what happens so guys this is the response we have received and you can see we have received a new message also on the whatsapp and you can see the message is this hello Neil Patrick thank you for showing your interest uh, and one of your team members will contact you shortly meanwhile you can check our brochure which we have attached with this message for more details you can visit our website and you can see in place of the body fields we got the details as this Neil Patrick website address and the name of our business and we got the brochure attached here okay so this is how it is going to work in real time guys and we are done setting up this automation so guys you need to set up this automation only once after that as and when you receive a form submission the whatsapp messages are going to be delivered automatically all right and guys the best part is you can use this same workflow that i have created because i'm going to paste the link of this same workflow in the description so that you can clone it in your own free public connect account and start using this automation instantly guys in this video you will learn how you can sell your excel files or google spreadsheet files automatically so guys here we have created and designed an automation for selling your files like excel files or google sheet files and here we have used a form an order form to take the orders from our customers for purchasing the files and as and when they are going to make the order the payment link of that order will be generated and will be sent to that customer on the email automatically and after that whenever the customer is going to complete the payment the files will be delivered to the customer via email automatically so all this is going to happen automatically without any manual intervention so it will save your time and improve your profits so guys we are going to set up these automations without any coding super simply so let's begin to set up this automation we are using Pabli connect which is an automation tool and this is the landing page of Pabli and I have pasted the same link in the description as well so from here you can sign up for free and you will get free automation tasks every month to test and run your automations okay so 
you can sign up right now from the given link and after that you have to sign in and you will see the dashboard of Pabli Connect. So this is the dashboard of Pabli Connect and from here you have to click on this create workflow button to set up the workflow. Here you can give any suitable name to the workflow after that click on create and your workflow will load up and you will find these kind of modules in your workflow the trigger and the actions okay so our automations are based on these two things only the trigger and the action so trigger is that event which is going to start the workflow and the action would be the consequences or the responses towards the trigger so here guys to sell excel files and the spreadsheet files i have created this workflow and here in the trigger i have connected with jot form application because we have created the order form using jot form only and the trigger event would be a new response that means whenever is going someone is going to make the order by submitting the form this workflow is going to trigger so to make this connection with jot form we have used this webhook url given by Pabli connect and for making this connection you just have to copy this url and reach the dashboard of uh, jot form here you have to open the form settings this is the form builder click on settings under settings on the left hand side you will find integrations tab click on it and here you will find this webhooks option you can search for it and guys here you have to add a integration so uh, our integration is already up and running let me remove this or let me uh, edit this integration to show you so when you open the uh, the webhooks tab you will find this add webhook field available here and here you have to paste the webhook url that you got from your workflow and then you have to click on complete integration and your integration will be ready okay so after that click on finish and here guys after making this integration uh, it here it will start showing waiting for the webhook connections response so this means you have to perform a test submission test submission means you have to manually fill that order form and the submission details will be captured here like this and the submission details will be captured here in this response section so let me show you that let me recapture this response i'm going to click on yes and here you can see this is how it will start waiting for the response now let me open the form again so guys this is the order form per order form for purchasing the document and here let me fill in the details so let any demo customer is filling this form all right and here we have uh, two files to sell one is excel file and the name of file is industry report template this is the amount and another is a balance sheet template which i have created in google sheets so you can select anyone i'm selecting this excel sheet only and here i'm clicking on submit and as i'm going to submit this form the response will be captured in the workflow let me show you the workflow and here you can see we have received the response and here it is showing the customer details demo customer and all other details okay right so after capturing the data you have to move forward in this automation and here you can see uh, after getting the data we want to generate a payment link for that customer and for genera generating the payment link we have connected with razor pay in the action step but before this action step i have added two more action steps here and in this action step i have used date time formatter feature of pabli okay actually we have used it two times why we have used it let me show you when you create a payment link in razor pay it asks for a expiry timestamp okay expiry timestamp means you have to provide a timestamp uh, which is a format of a time which uh, indicates which which uh, uh, instructs the razor pay that this payment link should expire on which time on which date okay so every payment link has a expiry date so to provide that expiry time you have to provide a timestamp here and for that i have connect i have used date time formatter feature of pabli in this action step okay and to add more action steps you just have to click here and the action steps will open up okay as many as you want and here we have connected with date time formatter selected the action event as modify current date okay and then i have selected a dates format i have selected the time zone and in the operation i have selected addition option and in the units i have selected days and in the value i have put two 
this means I have a, I have added two days more to the current date. Current date means the date at which the workflow is executing or running. Okay, so this is going to give you this date. And after that, I have converted this date as an expiry timestamp for our payment link. For that, I have connected date time formatter again. Then I used format date only action event. Then I have mapped the date here. And let me tell you how, how I have mapped it and why we map it. So guys, you can see in the previous step, we have received this date time label in this result, in this response. And here it is asking for the date that you want to change the format of. For that, I have just clicked here and the previous steps start showing up here like these. And from the second step, I have just clicked on this date time option to map it. Okay. Then I have selected the, it is asking from which format you got the date. So I have selected the format from here, which is this one. This format is MMDD YYY. I have selected it from here. Then here it is asking to which format you want to convert it. So I have wanted to convert it into timestamp. So I have selected timestamp option here from this list. Okay. And uh, then I have clicked on save and send test request button and we got this resulted timestamp label. So guys, when you map the labels here like this, what will happen whenever this workflow is going to run in real time, these labels are going to be updated and new timestamps ac according to the new labels will be generated automatically okay after that we connected with razor pay and to make this connection here uh, you can see i have used the action event as create payment link then click on connect it click on connect and from here i have selected add new connection option and it has asked for the key id and the key secret of razor pay so i have followed these instructions here let me show you that i have just reached the razor pays dashboard and under razor pays dashboard you will find the settings option here on the bottom left hand side and under the settings page you will find this api keys tab click on it and under the api key click on this regenerate test key button and uh, you have to activate the old key deactivate the old key then click on confirm and deactivate and that's how you can create the key id and the secret so you just have to copy both of these things and you have to paste the things here, sorry, here in this workflow here, and then click on save and you will be connected with razor pay like this. And after getting connected, it will ask for the amount of the payment link that you want to create out of razor pay. So we have received the details of amount from jot firm where we have mentioned the amount or the cost price of the sheets. And here you can see we have received this total sum label Okay, so I'm going to map these labels here in this razor pay step to create the payment link. So just click here and from this first step, you have to click on this total sum label to map it here. And remember to read this, you have to pass the currency in the smallest unit. That means uh, if you want to put 10 rupee here, you have to put 1000. Okay, because one rupee is equal to 100 pesa. So pesa is the smallest currency. So you have to put 1000 here multiplied by 100. Okay. So if you want to put 500 here, you have to put two more zeros here so that it will make the currency. Uh, it will make the amount as 500 only when it generates the link. Okay. And here you have to select the currency. So my currency is INR. So put INR here. So here we have the list of supported currencies. You can check your currencies uh, code here and you can put it here. The type of the link is link only. In the description, you can provide the description of the payment link. So I am putting the description as payment link off. And here I'm going to map the name of the thing that we are selling. That is the file. And this is the name of the file industry report template. So I'm mapping the products name here in this description. Okay. And here it is asking for the name, email and contact of the customer. So let's see what we have. In the first step, we have the name as this. So let me map the name from the jot form. Similarly, map the email. All right. If you have the contact number, you can map it here. I'm leaving this blank. This is not a compulsory field. And here you can provide a receipt number if you want. And here 
you have to provide the expiry time stamp and we have generated the time stamp here in the previous step you can see so this is the future time stamp uh, of the expiration of this link so just click here and from this last step map this expiration link okay so if you want to notify the customer about this payment link generated you can select this option and actually we are sending the email so i am selecting this option here as you send the email not raise or pay okay right so you can select the partial payments method the call callback url if you want to put you can put it here and by clicking on save and send test request button you can generate a link let me show you so you can see the response and here you can see the generated payment link let me show you so you, you can see the short URL of the link is here and let me open this for you. Okay, so that's how you can generate a payment link. And here you can see the rupees 500 payment link is generated for the industry report template. Okay, so we got the template generated and after that we have sent the payment link or to the customer on email using Gmail application. That's why we have connected with Gmail in the section step. And it's pretty easy to connect you just have to click on connect button then it will bring you to the login window and you will be connected okay and here you can see uh, it is asking for the recipient's email address so here we have mapped the email address of the customer from this first step all right then we have typed us here in the subject you can type the subject as payment link of and here like you can map the name of the product like this okay and here in the email content i have typed this email you can see dear and i have mapped the name of the customer thank you for your order we will send the file once you complete your payment and this is the payment link and here we have mapped the same payment link like this let me show you again from this razor pay step i have mapped this short url that got generated like this okay so when you map the labels here like this in real time when this workflow is going to run the labels are going to be updated and the things the name and the link is going to change automatically in the email as well that's why we map the data here okay now you can check your connection as well by clicking on save and send test request button and this mail will be delivered to this email id so let me show you the demo of this email so here I'm clicking on save and send test request button and I'll show you here how the email is going to look like. So this is the response we have received and here we have received a new email and this email you can read the subject payment link of industry report template and here you can see it is showing dear demo thank you for your order we'll send you the file once you complete the payment and this is the same payment link that we have generated and here you can see in place of the name the name got placed automatically as we have mapped here so this is how it is going to work so we are halfway done here this is our half work done now what we have want to do after that once customer receives the payment link and he is going to purchase he is going to complete the payment he is going to pay us we want to send the file also to that customer and that too automatically so for that we have created another workflow so here in this workflow we have connected razor pay in the trigger okay and selected the trigger event as payment captured okay so as the payment is going to capture we want to send the file okay so we have created this connection in the trigger with the help of this webhook url okay so you can read the steps written here to create this connection let me show you how you can do this so you just have to reach the Raz razor pay applications dashboard from here you have to click on settings okay and this is the settings page here you will find this webhooks tab click on it under webhooks you have to click on this add new webhook button and here you have to paste this webhook url that you got from your workflow so just copy it and paste it here okay then here you from this active event section you have to select this select this payment dot captured event you have to check this box so once you check this box whenever you are going to receive a payment the workflow is going to trigger okay then you have to click on create webhook okay so you can see this webhook is already existing in the database okay so when you click on create webhook button 
this connection will be created okay right and after that we are going to actually uh, make a test payment to capture this response of the payment here in this workflow for that you just have to create a test test payment using the same uh, you can create a payment here using the same payment link that you have generated okay so let me show you how you can capture this response so just click on recapture option click on yes okay and it will start waiting for the response so let me create a payment here so here you can see started showing the payment options card or upi so i'm selecting card options and here let me uh, put the test card details this is not an original card so we are using test card details to make a test payment okay and here i am clicking on pay and pay without saving the card okay so this is the demo bank page we have so i'm clicking on success and here you can see the payment is completed and let's see in the workflow if we got the data capture of the payment and here you can see guys in this response section we got the data captured here like this and it has started showing the email address of the customer and all other details the phone number and the amount you can see is showing up here with two extra zeros obviously okay because it is showing the currency in the smallest unit okay then we have applied number formatter feature of Pabli connect to correct this payment uh, value that we got okay for this guys I have selected number formatter then I selected the action event as perform math operation. So with the help of this, you can perform the mathematical operations. And here I want to correct this value. So here I'm going to map this amount value, amount label here in this step. Let me show you. So just click here and from this previous step, map the amount label. Okay, this is the amount label. Then put a comma here and put 100. Okay. Then it will ask which operation you want to perform. So I want to divide this number by 100. So I have selected divide. Then click on save and send test request. And the amount should, would be corrected like this. Okay. Right. And in this action step, I have, con I have connected with Google Sheets application because I have saved the links of the files that we want to sell on us in a spreadsheet that I have created in Google Sheets application. Let me show you that. Here you can see this is my Google spreadsheet and here I have saved these details. The amount of the uh, files that I want to sell, the title of the files and the links of the files. So this is the Excel link file. So actually I have uploaded my MS Excel, MS Excel file in my WordPress account, in my WordPress website and from there I have generated the shareable link and for this Google Sheet template file, what I have done, I have I used a trick here. Let me show you that. So for sharing any Google Sheet file, you just have to click here on the share button. And from this page, you can copy the shareable link by uh, giving the access as editor. Okay. And then click on copy link and you will get this kind of link. Let me show you. Let me show you in the spreadsheet only. Let me copy paste this link here. So we'll uh, receive this kind of link. Okay. This is the sharing link of this same file. Right. And here in the last, you can see we have this share sharing written here. Okay. So if you want to share a copy of this file, a downloadable copy of this file, what you have to do? You just have to remove this sharing from this uh, uh, and from the end of this link, you have to remove this sharing and add it and question mark. Okay. And from this last slash, you have to remove the things till the last slash and you have to f uh, put here copy that is copy. So that's how you can create a downloadable link of this spreadsheet, the Google spreadsheet. Okay. That's how we have created this link. All right, so we want to send the files now using these links. So I have connected Google Sheets here in this action step and I have used the action event as lookup spreadsheet rows. So I have used lookup because I want to sell up. I want to send a particular file whose payment we have received. 
So we have the details of the payments in the files name here in the spreadsheet. You can see I have the amount details here. Okay. So I, I am going to search this amount here in this spreadsheet with the help of this lookup spreadsheet rows action event. So lookup spreadsheet rows actually is going to look up for this amount that you have received from uh, your customer and corresponding to that amount only the file link will be shared. That's why we have uh, used lookup spreadsheet rows option. Then we have selected the spreadsheets name, the sheets name and here you can see it is asking for the lookup column. So it is asking in which column you want to look for a particular value. So I want to look in the column A the amounts that we have filled. So I have put the lookup column as column A and in the lookup value you have to put the value that you have uh, received from the razor pay and you have uh, corrected the amount using number formatter step. So from the second step map this result label like this. Okay then uh, keep these th two things as it is then click on save and send test request button and in the response it will capture the details corresponding to the amount. Here you can see the details got here. Here you can see the uh, amount value is 500 and the title is industry report template and you can see this is the same title we have here and the link is also captured here you can see this is the sharing link of the of this file okay and this is an excel file right. Now we have sent this file link to our customer using gmail again that's why we have connected gmail in the action step and from the first step you can map the email address of the customer that you'll find here like this. Then you can put the sender name as your name. You can map this uh, subject as the name of the file that you are selling. And you can map that from the Google Sheets tab. Okay. Then I have selected the email content type and I have written this email. Dear customer, thank you for your payment. Please find the purchase file in the attachment. If you have any queries, please reply to this. And in the attachment, I have mapped uh, the link of the file that we have received from the Google Sheets. Let me show you again. Okay, like this, right? So this is how it is going to work, guys. So you can change the name of the file as well from this step, okay? And you can check your connection again by clicking on save and send test request and another email will be delivered to your customer along with the attachment of the file. Okay. Let me show you the demo of this also. So this is the payment link that we have received and we have this customer is, has completed the payment using this link. Okay. Now I'm coming back in the uh, inbox and here let me click on save and send test request. And here you can see guys, we have received a new email and in this email you can read dear customer, thank you for your payment and here you can see industry report template is attached. Okay, and from here, the customer can download this file and this is the same file guys, let me show you that also. This is the same file that I have attached here in the spreadsheet. Let me show it here. So this is the same file that we have here in our spreadsheet that got sent here in this mail. Okay, so this is how it is going to work guys. So now we are done setting up this whole automation. It is an end to end automation of selling files automatically. Okay, so this is it guys and you can use these workflows as well as I'm going to paste the link of these workflows in the description. And you can clone these workflows in your own free Pabli Connect account and start using this automations instantly. Hello everyone. So in this video we will learn how to send jot form submissions to telegram. So imagine this you are running a business along with your friends on internet. So you are using jot form to generate leads about potential customers. Uh, let's say a lead called as john has been generated from your jot form. You have john's name, email address and all those details. So you want to notify your team members or your friends about this potential lead on telegram. So here you have two choices. The first choice is you can copy all the details of John, sort it out and manually send it on Telegram. The problem with this approach is it's actually very repetitive and tiresome. So in cases like these, I would suggest that you bring in some automation. So here when a new form is submitted, it will automatically send a message on Telegram. So in this video, we will be using Pabby Connect. 
to integrate JotForm and Telegram. The best part of using Public Connect is there is no need for coding skills or programming knowledge. It can be done easily. Let me show you on my screen. Okay, so to begin the process, first type pabli.com in your browser. pabli.com. Press enter. Okay, so this is the website of pabli.com. Here hover on products and here you will find the option called as connect. Click on connect and then just click on sign in. Okay, so this is the dashboard of Public Connect. As you can see, I already have made an account in Public Connect. You can also create your own free account in just two minutes. Here, I would like to mention one more thing that Public Connect offers a plan where you can try this integration absolutely free. So you just have to clone the template of its workflow, which is available in the description box. Once you clone the template, you will get immediate access to this workflow in your account. Okay, so scroll down and here you will find connect. Just click on access now. Okay, so at the top right corner, you will find a button, create workflow, click this, a dialog box appears in front of you. It is asking you to give a name to this workflow. I am going to give it as JotForm to Telegram. JotForm to Telegram. And then just click on create. Okay, so when you click on create, a window appears in front of you. This is called as the trigger window. So in the choose app, how about we make it as JotForm jot form because we want to send the data from jot form that is why now in the trigger event how about we make it as new response okay so new response is a trigger event so your obvious question is what is a trigger event trigger is basically a if statement it asks a question if the condition is met what should be done for example if a new response is created in jot form then what action should be taken by the system now in this case we only have one trigger event that is new response now, if you want more triggers of your choice, you can make a request to our team at admin at the ratepabri.com to custom build a trigger event for you. But at present, I just want to send the data when a new response is made in JotForm. So basically, the gist of the process is we are just trying to integrate JotForm to Public Connect. So let's have a visit to JotForm. So this is my JotForm account. So as you can see, these are the forms I have in my JotForm. Now, I want to integrate this particular form to Public Connect. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this form and just click on edit form okay so this is the edit page of my form so as you can see I have uh, entered some few fields like uh, name age email and contact number so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click on settings click here and then I'm going to click on integrations click this okay so in the integrations you have to look for webhooks just uh, type we webhooks okay so this is the webhook you want just click this okay so first of all we have to enter a url so first of all just uh, remove this http part and let me go to public connect and copy this this is the webhook url you want copy this and simply paste it here okay so we have added the webhook so just click on complete integration okay so it is uh, trying to trying to process so it will take a while to integrate with your jot form excellent so at this point we have integrated this particular form this particular form to public connect so let me just uh, go to uh, click on finish and let me just click on publish okay so this form is now integrated with public connect so basically this means that anytime new registration or a new entry is made in this particular form public connect will capture the data so as to ensure that public connect captures this data let me go to public connect and let me just click on this button capture webhook response click this Okay, so it is showing it is waiting for the data. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to jot form. Okay, I'm just going to copy this link and I'm going to open the form in a new tab. Okay, so imagine this a person is filling in his detail. So the kids registration form. So these are the details. So the name of the kid is Aaron Manuel. So his age is uh, six years. And this is his uh, email address, aaronmanuel1991 at the rate gmail.com. And this is his contact number. So let me just uh, click on submit okay so form submission has been made so let me go to public connect and check whether data has been captured yes the data has been captured okay so these are the details so we have the first name that is Aaron the last name is Manuel this is the age and this is the email and of course this is the contact number so basically we have to notify your team members about this newly generated lead on telegram so to do that all you have to do is just click on this plus button Okay, so when you click on this plus button, another window opens up. This is called as the action window. So in the choose app, how about we make it as telegram. Telegram. Now in the action event, how about we make it as send a message or a reply. Send a message or a reply is an action event. There are many more action events like edit a text, forward a message, unpin a message, send a photo and so on. All of them are a bunch of action events. 
Now, just like the triggers, if you have trouble finding the action events according to your choice, you can make a request to our team at admin at the ratepapri.com to custom build an action event for you. But at present, I just want to send the data or the message via Telegram. So let me just click on connect with Telegram. In the new credentials, we have to fill in the token. So to get the token, let's have a visit to Telegram. Okay, so this is my Telegram account. So to begin the process here, first of all, type bot father. Bot father. Okay, this one. Okay, so first of all, we are going to create a new bot. So I'm going to type it as slash new bot. Okay. Okay, so the bot father is replying, all right, a new bot. So what, are, what is the name that we are going to give it? So I'm going to give it as public connect. Public connect integrations four. Okay, so this is the name public connect integration four. So let me just press enter. Okay, so we have to give a username. So I'm going to give the username to this bot as jot form jot form to telegram underscore bot and just press enter. Okay, excellent. So the bot father is uh, sending me the message that this uh, username is acceptable. So once uh, this uh, username is accepted by the bot father, it's generated to token. So this is the token we want. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. This is the token we want and just click on save. Okay, so when you click on save, a set of blanks has appeared in front of you. The purpose of these blanks is very simple. We are going to create a message in Telegram from the data that we have received from JotForm via public connect. So first of all, we have to figure out what is our chat ID. So basically chat ID is the individual ID of your group in Telegram. So basically we are going to create a new group. So let me just create a new group. I'm going to press on these three horizontal bar, click on new group. Okay, so I'm going to add my bot into this group first. Okay, so this is the bot name, public connect integrations four integration for this one click on next okay so i'm going to give a name to this group jot form leads okay so let me just click on create a group okay so a group called as jot form leads has been created excellent so my next step is i'm going to bestow admin privileges to my bot so there is something you should know that uh, bestowing the admin privileges to your bot in web version of telegram is not possible you actually have to download the app in your desktop or your mobile. So currently I'm using the app version in of uh, the desktop version of the app. So this is the group JotForm Lead. And these are the two members I have. One is me and other one is my bot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click this and I'm just going to click on promote to admin. Okay, so a window appears in front of you. So in the custom title, just type admin. Okay, because we want to promote this bot as admin. So let me just click on save. Okay, so as you can see, the admin is now the bot. Okay, so the bot has been made as the admin and it is showing it as it has access to message. So as you can see, this is the admin rights of my bot. Excellent. So I'm going to minimize the desktop version of this app. Okay, I have minimized this. Okay, so at present, there are two members. One is me as well as other one is my bot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some more members. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to invite some members. So this person, Sujata Ahirwar, is uh, my friend. Okay, so I'm going to add her into my group. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it's still showing two members. So when I click on refresh, we will find there are three members in the group. So this is the group jot form leads and we have three members. Okay, so now we are going to figure out our chat ID. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy these uh, characters. Okay, so I have copied this and I'm going to paste it here. Okay, so I have pasted the characters. Okay, so this is the characters that we have copied and then I have pasted it here. Excellent. So this is not the complete chat ID. So bring your attention to this part, message to private channel. So as you can see, this is the chat ID, the complete chat ID. So all we have to do is enter this minus 100 in front of these characters. So our chat ID will be ready. Okay, I repeat again. All you have to do is enter minus 100 in front of uh, these characters so that we get the complete chat ID. So our chat ID is ready. Now coming to the message, let's start mapping. So let me introduce you to this button. This button is called as the mapping button. So when we click this, we will find all the data that we have received from chart form. So in the text message, how about we type uh, new lead, new lead generated new lead generated let's make it as capital 
Okay, so after I have uh, typed a new lead generated, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter slash n. So basically the purpose of a slash n is very simple. It's going to create a new line. So slash n it is, and uh, I'm going to type in the name. So the name is Aaron, okay. Enter a space and type manual, map manual, okay. Okay, so our name is ready. And in the next line, to, to create a next line, we are going to uh, map the email address. So this is the email address. I think this is the email address, okay. And in the next line, for the next line, we are going to again type slash n. In the next line, we are going to type the age. So this is the age, okay. And in the next line, slash n, we are going to map in the contact. So this is the contact. Okay, so we have uh, mapped all the details. This is the full name, this is the email, this is uh, the age, and this is the contact. Excellent. So in the parse mode, let's keep it as HTML. In the disable notification, let's keep it as no. In the disable link preview, let's keep it as no. So when I click on save and send test request, it will send this data to Telegram. So let me do that. Let me just click on save and send test request. Okay, so the API response is showing the data has been sent to Telegram. So let's have a look. Okay, so this is uh, the message new lead generated. This is Aaron Manuel. This is the email Aaron Manuel 1991 at the The age is six and this is the phone number. Excellent. So the presence of uh, this data shows that we have successfully integrated Jot form and Telegram with help of Public Connect. So how about we double check if our integration is working fine or not. But before we do that, let me take you to Public Connect and let me explain you the whole mechanism in a nutshell. So here I'm going to minimize my action window and I'm going to minimize my trigger window. So basically this is the whole process in a nutshell. First you integrated Jot form to Public Connect and then you have integrated Public Connect to Telegram. So now there's a perfect flow of data between Jot form and Telegram. Okay, excellent. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going back to my Jot form. Okay, so I'm going to uh, copy this link, open this in a new tab and fill some more details. Okay, so this time we are going with Tom Cruise. So the name is Tom, the last name is Cruise. Tom Cruise is uh, 14 years and this is his email address and this is his contact details. So let me just click on submit. Okay, so submission has been made in JOT form. So let's have a look in Telegram. Do we have uh, the notification of uh, newly generated lead called as Tom Cruise? Yes, we do have the lead that is Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise 1234 at gmail.com. This is the age and this is the phone number. Excellent. So our integration is working absolutely fine. So this means anytime a new submission is made in JOT form, it will be reflected as a message in, in Telegram. Hello everyone, I am your host Ayushi Kara Setia and welcome back to our channel Pabli. So in this video we are going to learn how to send JOT form leads to go high level CRM automatically. So first let us understand what these software applications are all about. So in this particular automation we are using JOT form which is a form building software application. So in place of JOT form we can also use Google forms, paper form, type form or any other so uh, form building software application. And the second application we are using is Go High Level CRM. So it is a CRM software application. So in place of Go High Level, we can also use HubSpot CRM, Zoho CRM, Insightly CRM or any other CRM software application. So let's take an example that you are a business owner and you are collecting the leads through the JOT form submission. Now you want that whenever any of the customer fills your JOT form, automatically the details of the customer should be added as a new contact into your high level CRM account so that you can use that particular data for the future references you can contact the customer for your offers and promotions and even a customer database will be created into your CRM software application for this we need to create a connection between Google Jot form and go high level CRM so that whenever the form is filled automatically the contact is added to your CRM software application so in order to create a connection between both these software applications, we are going to use Pabli Connect. So basically, Pabli Connect is an automation and integration software which will help us in integrating both these software applications automatically. The best part here is it doesn't require any coding skills or programming knowledge. Even a non-technical person can use this software application very easily. So first we have to create an integration between JotForm and Pabli Connect. Then Pabli Connect is going to capture all the details of the customer whenever the form is filled and using the details of the customer automatically a new contact will be created into your Go High Level CRM account. And in this way we are going to learn that how we can create an integration between JotForm and Go High Level CRM using Pabli Connect. So let us learn the integration process now on my screen.
To start the integration, let us type PABBLY, Pabli.com in our browser. This is the website of Pabli. Here we have to come to products and click on Pabli Connect. This is the landing page of Pabli Connect. As you are the first time user, you have to click on sign up for free option. By clicking on this option, you can create your own account in just 2 minutes and you will get 100 task free every month. As I already have an account with Pabli Connect, I will simply click on sign in. In the all apps section, come to Pabli Connect and click on access now. This is the dashboard of Pabli Connect. Here we have to create a workflow. For that, come to this plus sign and click on create workflow. Here we have to give a name to the workflow. So let us give the name as Jot Form to Go High Level Integration. Here you can give the workflow name as per your requirement and simply click on create. Now here we can see a trigger window and an action window. So Pabli Connect works on the concept of trigger and action. Trigger means when this happens, action means do this. So in this use case, we want to send jot form lead data to go high level CRM account. So open this trigger window and here in the choose application, let us find jot form. In the trigger event, we have to select new response. Now here we can see a webhook URL and some instructions. So let us read the instructions. Open your form in the form builder and click on the settings tab. Go to the integrations, search for webhook and paste the above URL in the add webhook field. For that, we have to copy this webhook URL from here. And I will go to the jot form where I have created some forms. So in this particular integration, we are using stock market conference form over here. And here we can find that we have zero submissions to this particular form. Let's click on edit form. Now here, this is the stock market, market conference form where I have taken the basic fields like first name, last name, email address and the WhatsApp number of the customer. So if you want to add some more fields to this particular form, you can click on this plus sign add form element and you can add the fields as per your requirement. Now we have to create an integration between this particular form and Pabli Connect. So that whenever this form is filled, automatically Pabli Connect can capture the data. For that, come to the settings option. Here we have we can find integrations option. Click on it. Here we have to search for webhooks. Let us find webhooks. Now it is asking to add a webhook. So I'm just going to paste the webhook URL over here, which we have copied from Pabli Connect, and click on complete integration. Integration is ready. Okay. Let's click on finish. So here we can see a tick mark on the webhook option. It means the webhook is set on this particular form. Let's move back to Pabli Connect. And here we can see that it is waiting for the webhook response. So in order to capture the response, we have to do a test submission. It means we have to fill up the form on the name of a customer. So let's go to the form once again. Here we have to come to the publish option. And here we can find link to share. So this is the link which you can share it with your customers to get the form filled or you can embed this particular link on a web, a web page or a website to capture the responses. So we are going to just open this link in a new tab. And here we are going to fill up the details on the name of a customer. So let's give the first name as Adam, last name as Smith, email address as Adam Smith, 123 at gmail.com. And let's uh, give the WhatsApp number over here. And click on submit. Thank you. Your submission has been received. Okay. So the form has been filled. Let's move back to Pabli Connect. And here we can see the responses received and all the details of the form submission are captured over here. Okay. Here we can find the form title as stock market conference. When we scroll down here we can find the first name, last name, email address and the WhatsApp number of the customer. So now we want that using these details automatically the customer should be added to your go high level CRM account. For that come to this action window. Here in the choose application let us find go high level or high level. I'm just going to find high level okay. In the action event we have to select create contact. Click on connect. Click on add new connection. Now it is asking for the token. So let us read the instructions. To get the location API key bearer token, log into your high level account, go to the settings, 
कंपनी एंड फाइनली ए की फॉर एक्शन इवेंट्स लाइक क्रिएट लोकेशन एंड क्रिएट यूजर यू नीड टू पुट इन द एजेंसी ए की एज अ बेयर टोकन so we have to go to the uh, go high level account we have to go to the settings then we will be moving to company and then we will be finding the api key so i'll just take you to my go high level crm account so this is my go high level crm dashboard here when we scroll down at last we can find the settings option click on it and here we can find the api keys click on api keys and here we can find the agency api keys and location api key so i want the contact to be added to a specific location named arya associates so i'll be copying this api key from here okay and here we have to paste the same api key as a token and let's click on save okay and now the high level account is connected to pabli connect just because i was already logged into my high level account so make sure before creating a connection you are logged into your go high level crm account Now here we have to map the first name, last name, full name, email address of the customer. So we have already got all these details from the Jot Form submission. So we are going to map all these details now. Let us map all of all of them one by one. First name from Jot Form. The first name was Adam. Here we have to map the last name as Smith. Here we have to map the full name. So let us map both of them all together. That is the first name. as well as the last name okay here we have to map the email address so let us map it from short form submission here we have to map the phone number so this was the phone number if you have the address details you can map it over here as we don't have all these details we are just leaving it as blank and let's click on save and send test request Okay, and here we can see the response is received. It means a new contact is added to our Go High Level CRM account. Let's check it. We have to go to uh, Go High Level CRM account. From here, we will be moving to the account, and the account name was Arya Associates. Here, when we scroll down, we can find the contacts option. Click on it, and here we have to select contacts slash smart links. and here we can find a new contact adam smith created over here here we can find the phone number as well as the email address and here we can find the created date and time so here in this way we can see that our integration is working fine and the jot form customers is getting added to the go high level crm account automatically so let's move back to public connect and let us save this workflow first data saved successfully okay now we have to check this in the real time whether our integration is working actually fine or not for that we have to go to the jot form once again and we have to fill up the form on the name of some other customer so let us fill the form i am just going to give the first name as shikha last name as arya email address as shikha arya 22@gmail.com and let's add the whatsapp number and let's click on submit Okay thank you your submission has been received so the form has been filled now let us check our go high level crm account we have to refresh it and here we can find a new customer named shikha arya along with the phone number and the email address so in this way we can see that our integration is perfectly working fine let's move back to public connect and i'll just minimize all these windows and let us see in a nutshell whatever we have done till now So first we have created an integration between Jot Form and Pabli Connect. Then Pabli Connect has captured all the details of the customer through the form submission and using those details automatically a new contact was created into your Go High Level CRM account. And in this way we have created a successful integration between Jot Form and Go High Level CRM using Pabli Connect. Hello everyone, welcome to Pabli Connect. Today in this video we are going to integrate two software applications. jot form and salesforce so the use case here is whenever a new response is created through jot forms automatically create lead in salesforce now let us know what these two software applications are all about so jot form helps you to create online forms whereas salesforce is a crm platform the issue here is that these two software applications don't have any integration between them and that is why we are going to use pabli connect 
Pabli Connect is an integration software which will help you to transfer data from jot form to Salesforce. The best part here is you don't require any knowledge of coding. So let me show you this on my screen. So here I am at Google and now what I'm going to do is I'll go to this URL section over here and I'm going to type pabli.com. Okay, so this is the website of Pabli and now I will hover over this product section over here and I'm going to click on connect. Okay, so now I'm going to click on sign in. Okay, so now because I've already signed into my account, that is why I am here. You can also sign up for free in just two minutes. Here, I would like to mention one more thing. Pabli Connect offers a free plan where this integration can be tried out absolutely free. You just have to clone the template of the workflow. The link for the same is available in the description below the video. Once you clone the template, you will immediately get access to this workflow right in your account. So now I'm going to scroll down and here at connect, I am going to click on access now. Okay, so this is the dashboard of Pabli Connect and you can see we have so many workflows already created over here. So now I'm going to create a new workflow by clicking on this create workflow button. Okay, so now I'm going to give a name to this workflow and I'm going to name it as JotForm to Salesforce Lead. Now I'm going to create it. So now here in this workflow, we are going to integrate JotForm with Salesforce. So first here in Choose App, I am going to choose JotForm. Okay. Now in Trigger Event, according to our workflow, whenever a new response is made through JotForms, we want to create new lead in Salesforce. That is why new response here will be our Trigger Event. Now you might have a question in your mind that what is this term called Trigger Event? Let me tell you that automations run on the concept of triggers and actions. It is all about when something happens, do this. For example, when a sale happens, send an email. In our case, whenever we get a new response through JotForm, we want to create a lead in Salesforce. That is why new response in JotForm will be our trigger event, whereas creating lead in Salesforce will be our action event. So after choosing the app and after choosing the trigger event, you can see a term called webhook URL and a URL displayed over here. Now you might again ask me that what is this webhook URL and how is it helpful for us? Let me tell you that webhook is an essential way to get data from an external software at Pabli's end. So this webhook URL helps you to build a connection between the trigger software application and Pabli Connect. So what we actually do is after choosing the app and after choosing the trigger event, we copy this webhook URL from here and we go and paste it inside the trigger software application, which is JotForm in our case. So now you can read the instruction written over here and you can just follow them. I am also going to do the same. So now I'll just copy this webhook URL from here and I have already logged into my JotForm, you can see. And I have created this form called Salesforce lead. And through this form, I'm going to get my response. So now what I'm going to do is here in more, I am going to click on settings. Okay. So now here you can see this integrations option. So I'm going to click on it. Okay. And you can see webhooks option over here. So I'll just open it. And here we are going to edit the integration. So here I am just going to remove this webhook and I am going to paste the webhook URL that we got from Pabli Connect. So I'll just paste it. Okay. And now I'm just going to click on complete integration. Okay, so you can see we have successfully created our integration. That means we have successfully set our webhook. Now what I'm going to do is I'll go back to Pabli Connect. And now I'm going to click on capture webhook response. So now it is time to go to our form and now we are going to get our response. So I'll go back to my jot form and I'm going to open our form. So I'll just go back. Okay, so we have our form over here and now we are going to get a response. So I'll just fill the name, Robert Casper, address, I'm just going to put the same one over here. Uh, I'll change the email, Robert 010 at the rate gmail.com. Company, I am going to write Pabli Connect. Okay, now I'm just going to submit. Okay, so we have successfully submitted our response over here. Now I'll just go back to Pabli Connect. And now we are going to check if Pabli Connect has captured the data or not. So I'll go back. 
So you can see we have got a webhook response over here. You can see we have the form ID, we have the submission ID. You can also see the webhook URL. If you come down, you can see the form title and I'll just extend it. You can see the details that we have filled. You can see first name, last name, the address is here, city is here, state, PIN, okay. Email is also here, company is here, okay. I'll just save it, okay. So here we have successfully finished our first step integration that is integration of Jot form and Pabli Connect. Now we are going to begin with our second step integration and here we are going to integrate Salesforce and Pabli Connect. So here in choose app I am going to choose Salesforce. Okay now in action event according to our workflow whenever we get a new response through Jot form we want to create lead in Salesforce. That is why create lead will be our action event over here. You can see we have various other action events available. You can select whichever action event you want according to your choice. And if you don't get the action event of your choice, you can again contact our team at admin at the rate pabli.com and our team will help you. Now I'm going to click on create lead because this is our action event over here. Now I'm going to connect with Salesforce. Okay. So now under credentials, you have two options. Either you can create new credential or you can select any existing credentials like this. Here, I am going to let it be new credentials and I am going to connect with Salesforce. So now because I've already logged into my Salesforce account, that is why here there'll be no issue. But sometimes you may have to put your login credentials. Okay, so here I'm just going to allow the access. You don't have to worry about your data. Everything is 100% safe and secure with Pabli Connect. Now I'm going to click on OK. So here we have some empty fields and we have to fill the information according to our webhook response. So we are just going to map these details here in the fields. So you can see it is asking us for the last name and it is the required field. So let us map our last name. It is here. First name. OK. Now title, I'll just leave it. Company, we have the company. Let me map it. OK. Phone, we don't have the phone. I'll put the email. Okay. Website description. I'll just write jot form response. Lead source, I let it be web. Status, okay. Open not contacted rating, I let it be the same. Street, we have the address. City, Bhopal, uh, country. Okay, now I'm going to click on save and send test request. Okay, so you can see we have got our API response. That means we have successfully finished the integration of Jot form and Salesforce successfully. Now it is time to go back to Salesforce and now we are going to check if we have created a new lead or not. So I'll go to my Salesforce account and here you can see leads option. So I'm just going to open it. So you can see we have Robert Casper over here. I'll just open it. So you can see we have created the lead over here. You can see the email is here. Okay, the address is here, lead source is here, the name, company name. You can also see the description, jot form response. So we have successfully finished our integration and our integration is working fine. Now I'm going to show you this process again with one more example so that you can understand how this integration takes place in real time. So now I'll go back to my jot form and I'm going to make one more submission. So the first name is going to be Jordan, last name is Moravik, address, I am just going to put an address over here, okay, I'll change the email, jordan011 at the rate gmail.com, company, I let it be Pabli Connect, okay, now I'm going to submit. Okay, so we have submitted one more response over here in Jot form. Now we'll go back to Salesforce and we are going to check if we have created a new lead or not. So I'll go back to Salesforce. I'm just going to refresh this page once. So you can see we have a new lead over here, Jordan Moravik. I'll just open it. So you can see we have the other details as well. We have the email, we have the address, the description is Jot form response. You can also see the name and the company. So now we have successfully finished our integration and our integration is working fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go back to Pabli Connect and I'm going to explain you what has happened in our example. Okay. So in our example, what has happened is first the information came from Jot form to Pabli Connect. Then from Pabli Connect, the information went to Salesforce. 
So now every time a new response is created through Jot Forms, automatically a lead will be created in Salesforce. So we have successfully finished the integration of Jot Form and Salesforce using Pabli Connect. Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel Pabli. So in this video, we are going to learn how to create database item in Notion on Jot Form submission automatically. So the idea here is that whenever you receive a new submission on your Jot Form, automatically the details of the customer should be added as a database item in your Notion account. But the question arises that how the submissions can be created as a database item in Notion. So first let us check this in the real time and then we will move on to the integration process. So this is the contact form which I have created using Jot Form where I have asked for the full name, email address and mobile number of the customer. Okay, And this is my Notion workspace. So now I want that whenever any of the customer fills this particular form, all the details of the customer should be added as a new database item here in this particular workspace that is Jot Form Contact Responses. So I'll just fill this form. I'm just going to give the full name as Adam Smith, email address as Adam Smith, 11 at the rate gmail.com and let's add the mobile number over here. And let's click on submit. Okay, the form has been filled. Now let us check our Notion account. And here we can find the details of the customer, full name, email address, mobile number and the submission ID. So all the details of the customer are captured over here. So now here you might be wondering that I just filled the job form over here, the contact form and automatically the details of the customer are added to this particular workspace in my Notion account. So how did I manage to do this? Let me tell you, this has become possible just because of the automation and integration process. So in order to create an integration between JotForm and Notion, we are going to use a software application named Pabli Connect. So basically, Pabli Connect is an automation and integration software which will help us in integrating JotForm with Notion automatically. The best part here is, it doesn't require any coding skills or programming knowledge. Even a non-technical person can use this software application very easily. So first we have to create an integration between JotForm and Pabli Connect. Then Pabli Connect is going to capture the details from the JotForm submissions and using all those details, automatically a new database item will be created into your Notion account. And in this way, we will be learning that how we can create an integration between JotForm and Notion using Pabli Connect. So in this integration, we are using two software applications. The first one is JotForm, which is a form building software application. So in place of JotForm, we can even use Pabli Form Builder, Paper Form, Google Forms, etc. And the second application we are using is Notion, which is a database management, note taking and project management software application. So in place of Notion, we can use other note taking software applications also like Microsoft OneNote, etc. So let us learn the integration process now. For this, let us type pabbly pabli.com in our browser. This is the website of Pabli. Here we have to come to products and click on Pabli Connect. This is the landing page of Pabli Connect. As you are the first time user, you have to click on sign up for free option. You can create your own account in just 2 minutes by clicking on this option. As I already have an account with Pabli Connect, I'll simply click on Sign In. In the All Apps section, come to Pabli Connect and click on Access Now. This is the dashboard of Pabli Connect. Here we have to create a workflow. For that, come to this plus sign and click on Create Workflow. Here we have to give a name to the workflow. So let us give the name as Create Database Item in Notion on JotForm Submission. Here you can give the workflow name as per your requirement and simply click on create. Now here we can find a trigger window and an action window. So Pabli Connect works on the concept of trigger and action. Trigger means when this happens, action means do this. So in this use case, we want the details of the customer to be captured from JotForm submission. So open this trigger window and here in the application name, let us find JotForm. In the trigger event, we have to select new response. Here we can find a webhook URL and the instruction is also mentioned. 
So let us read the instructions. Open your form in the form builder and click on the settings tab. Go to the integrations, search for the webhook and paste the above URL in add webhook field. Okay, so I'm just going to copy this webhook URL from here. Let's move back to our jot form. So this is my jot form account where I have created few forms. So I have created this contact form for this integration. I'm just going to click on this edit form option. Here I have asked for the first name, last name, email address and mobile number of the customer. If you want to add some more details to this particular form by clicking on this plus sign add form element, you can add more fields as per your requirement. Okay. Now to create an integration between Jot form and public connect, we have to come to the settings tab. Here we can find the integrations tab. Click on integrations. Now here we have to search for webhooks. So let us find webhooks. Now here it is asking to add a webhook. So we have to paste the same webhook URL over here which we have copied from public connect. So I am just going to paste it and let's click on complete integration. And here we can see that the integration is ready. Let's click on finish. Okay, and here we can see a tick mark on the webhooks option. So let's move back to public connect. And now here we can see that it is waiting for the webhook response. So in order to capture the response, let's go to the form once again. Here we are going to click on publish. Okay, and here we can find the link which can be shared with your customers. And by using this particular link, they can fill up the forms. So I'm just going to open this link in a new tab. And we are going to just fill up the details over here. So I'm just going to give the first name as Shikha, last name as Arya, email address as Shikha Arya, 25 at the rate gmail.com. And here I'm just going to add the mobile number along with the country code. And let's click on submit. Okay, thank you. Your submission has been received. Okay, so the form has been filled. So now let's move back to public connect. And here we can find the responses received and all the details related to the form submission are captured over here. Okay. I'll just scroll down. Here we can find the webhook URL. Okay. Here we can find the full first name, last name, email address and mobile number of the customer. So now we want that using all these details, automatically a new database item should be created in your Notion account. So come to this action window. Open it. Here in the application name, let us find Notion. In the action event, we have to select create page, click on connect, click on add new connection. Now it is asking for the token. So let us read the instructions. Log into your Notion account. Now navigate to settings and members, integrations tab, develop your own integrations from the left side menu. Okay, so I'll just take you to my Notion account. Here I have already created a workspace or a page named Jotform contact responses. If you want to add a new page over here, by clicking on this plus sign, you can add a page. Here I have added few fields that is full name, email address, mobile number and submission ID. And if you want to add some more fields to this particular page, you can add it by clicking on this plus sign. Okay. So now let us go to the settings and members option. Here we can find the integrations option. Simply click on integrations. Now here we can see that so many integrations are already created. Now we are going to create a new integration. For that, click on this develop your own integrations. Okay, here we have to click on plus new integration. Here we are going to give the integration name as Jotform integration. Here we can select the logo. If you want to upload an image over here, you can up upload it over here. Here you can uh, select the associated workspace, okay, and I'll just click on submit. Okay, and here we can find internal integration token. Before that, I'm just going to save this integration first. Let's click on save changes, okay, and now let's click on show. Here we can find the token, so I'm just going to simply copy this token from here. I'll go back to public connect and I'll paste the token over here. Okay, and let's click on save. Okay, now the Notion account is connected to Pabli Connect. Now here we have to select the database, but we cannot find the database over here. So first we have to create a link between the new integration which we have created and the database. 
for that I'll just go to the integration okay and here I'll just go back and here we can find our integration jot form integration so it is already created I'll just go to the page that I have created named jot form contact responses here I'll just click on this share button okay make sure you uh, you have enabled the share to web option okay here we have to select the invitee that is the integration which we have created so I'm just going to find jot form integration okay let's click on jot form integration and let's click on invite okay and here we can see that the integration is shared with the workspace okay now let us move back to public connect and now we are going to just refresh it for the new items okay and here we can find jot form contact responses database is captured over here now we have to map the content email mobile number so if, so if you want to map some content you can map it over here I'm just going to leave it as blank okay here let us map the email address that we have received from the form submission okay so we are going to map all these details now so let us map the email from jot form okay I'll scroll down and this was the email address let us map the mobile number again from jot form here we have to map the submission ID so let us map submission ID also and at last the full name is required I'm just going to map the full name also that is Shikha as well as Arya okay so we have already mapped all the details and now let us click on save and send test request okay and here we can see the response is received so now let us check our notion account I'm going to refresh it okay and before refreshing itself we can find the details of the customer is added over here in our page here we can find the full name email address mobile number as well as the submission ID so in this way we can see that our integration is working fine so let's move back to Pabli connect and let us save this workflow first data saved successfully okay now we have to check this in the real time for that I'm just going to fill up the form details once again so I'll just go to my jot form here I'll just open it in a new tab once again I'm going to give the full name as Kuldeep Gupta let's give the email address as Kuldeep G 22 at the rate gmail.com and I'll add the mobile number over here and let's click on submit okay the form has been submitted now let us check our notion account okay and here we can find Kuldeep Gupta and his details are added over here in this particular workspace so in this way we can see that our integration is perfectly working fine I'll just go back to Pabli connect and I'll just minimize all these windows and let us see in a nutshell whatever we have done till now so first we have created an integration between jot form and Pabli connect then Pabli connect has captured all the details of the new form submission using all those details we have created a new page into our notion account or a new database into our notion account and in this way we have created a successful integration between jot form and notion using Pabli connect so not just these software applications you can integrate a ton of applications and automate your business with Pabli connect in case of any queries you can connect us to this Pabli forum to check the pricing details of Pabli Connect, you can visit this particular URL. Also, the link of Pabli Connect and this workflow is available in the description box. You can clone the same workflow into your account directly. If you really like this video and this video are helpful for you, then please comment, share and subscribe. Thank you everyone.